I didn't push her. She did it all by herself. <laughs> oh, you didn't see Stephanie stagger off the platform. I went that direction. Good morning. We're so glad that you're here, even with our mask and social distance, that some are joining us online, but we're glad that you're here to, to worship with us today. I invite you now to uh, join in our, our welcoming hymn, We, all, uh, we, uh, uh, we Lay Down Our Crowds. Here we get it. We Fall Down. Thank you. Please join. Let's sing it twice, please. We fall down, we lay our crown at the feet of Jesus, the greatest of all. Righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your name. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delight. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. I invite you now oh, to join me in our, our opening prayer. Please pray with me. Almighty God, we rejoice that once again you have called us in person, claimed us online, and gathered us all in worship. You have sought us out like a groom seeking his bride at a wedding feast to transform our hearts with the joy of your gracious love. Has your church, we rejoice that you equip, energize, and change us by the Holy Spirit to be servants of God. Amen. And now I'm gonna invite you to stand as we sing together <laughs> immortal, invisible, God only wise. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. Let's stand together. <laughs>
Amen. Please be seated. If we say we have no sins, then we're deceiving ourselves, and the, the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, our uh, God, who is gracious and merciful, will forgive us of all of our sins and all of our unrighteousness. It's in the promise of this forgiveness that we can make our confession with confidence. Please join me. Merciful God, we lay before you all the distractions and diversions that have kept us from seeing your miraculous actions in the common places of life. You shine your light of hope into the word, but we chose to look only for the darkness of despair. O oh God, we need Jesus to change us from fear and worry and to lead us to a new day of hopeful service through the gracious gift of the Spirit and Jesus' unconditional love. Let us now take a, a few moments of reflection for personal confession and listening for God to speak to your heart today. My friends, Christ came into the world to save sinners. He took our sins upon his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let's now stand at, at a safe social distance and make some noise as we welcome one another in Christ's name. Amen. seated. Please join me in prayer. Oh gracious God, we ask that you send your spirit upon us. Open up our hearts, our minds, our very self to your word that has it is read and then has it is proclaimed. We may meet you in our hearts today. We pray this in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, three yet one, now and forever. Amen. From Isaiah, the 64th chapel, chapter, uh, a celebration for Zion. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be a crown of beauty in the name of the Lord." and the royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married." 
whereas a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. And from the Gospel of John, we visit John once again. This time the second chapter, the first sign that Jesus shows his disciples and others of his call and of his mission. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the, the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water that had become wine... And did not know where it had came from, though the servants who had drawn it, uh, the, the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee. And revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. We thank God for these words of life. In our passage, we see the beginning of a new life together of a couple. We see a promise of of abundance. We see a, a promise of love and we see an image of, of joy. Jesus comes in our story from John today with new wine. New wine of a deeper love, of a, a greater hope, of a stronger faith and of an eternal joy that he invites us into. So today you and I are also invited into the, the now. You and I are invited to Jesus' wedding feast. If I had only known, and probably I should have, since I had already completed seminary and, and knew about my faith and the, the breadth of the, the Christian faith, but I really had no idea. I'd been focusing on my work and on the, the Presbyterian ordination exams and the, the tests that had to be taken to become a, a pastor, that I was living in a, a Presbyterian world, if you will. So I missed a great opportunity when I married a, a Greek-American girl. Many of you know that, that Paula is a, an Orthodox a Christian, a Greek Orthodox. Her father was Greek Orthodox. And this is the faith that she lives in and that she claims. And as we were getting married, I had no idea the possibilities. You see, I'm a, a Presbyterian. And we decided when we were going to be married that we'd be married in the Presbyterian church. I was going to be a Presbyterian minister. It seemed the rational thing to, to do. And so we planned, and many of you know, our wedding was the day after Christmas because we didn't have any money, so the, the church was, was decorated, and, and we didn't want, Paula didn't want to ask her, her father for, for money, so we had a very simple wedding, a Presbyterian wedding, I will say. We had the wedding and the service, and then we went to the church basement, and we had punch and cake. Wow. If I had only known what a Greek wedding is like. 
You dress in gold and, and they put crowns on your head and you parade around. And, and not like the, the Greek, my big fat Greek wedding, I wouldn't have to be baptized in a pool. But I certainly could have had the gold crowns and the feast and the, the wine to, to flow. But I had to have a Presbyterian wedding. <sighs> and it was good. And I'm thankful. And we're blessed. But oh, the possibilities. We see those possibilities in our, our passage today. Weddings in the time of Jesus were a, a broad celebration. Often it was a, a, a whole community party. It was a, a sign usually of, of two families actually being joined together as they are today, but even more then almost has contractually joined together to, to support one another. And the whole community was invited to come in and, and enjoy the festivities. And, and they weren't just one afternoon. They sometimes would go on for days, even a whole week of wedding celebrations. And into this party we see Jesus enter. Mary has been, been invited to this wedding and it seems that an invitation has also been offered to Jesus and he's extended this to his disciples. They've all been invited to come and in, enjoy in the, the celebration. We assume like most weddings it's a time of, of happiness and of laughter, of, of discussion and and we know from the story that the, the wine was flowing. So, Mary begins to notice that the wine's flowing and it's running out. And like any party, if you run out of the, the refreshments, if you run out of the food, if you, you run out of any of the, the, the feast, it appears that you've come up short, that you haven't planned well. And if you come up short with the wine, you could have some really disappointed guests and even a, a social stigma attached to you in Jesus' time. So Mary's concerned, and in her kindness, she wants to put her son to work. In, in John, it appears that she somewhat recognizes the, the power that is within him, the power that the angel Gabriel announced, the, the promise of what possibilities were within this boy that she had raised. So in what she must have determined was a, a pretty pressing situation, she turns to Jesus and she says, do something, fix this. Help them with this wine. And Jesus has a bit of a, a curse response in words, <laughs> uh, maybe like many sons do, but it's the actions that count. What does this have to do with you and me? It, it wasn't their family. It wasn't one of his uh, uh, older siblings or, or sisters from Joseph that was getting married. It, it was just his friends. What did this have to do with you and, and me? I imagine then he must have looked into Mary's eyes and into the heart, and then he knew what he must do. Somewhat of in that harmony of, of the Lord Almighty and, and Mary in that gathering of the Spirit, it's in her words and in this time, and that she is present when Jesus knows his first sign is to be given. Mary asked him, but he responds because he knows that now is the time. And it later says that by seeing this sign, disciples believed. Jesus has decided to help. And he looks into the room and there are six huge clay vases for the rite of purification. You see, throughout the year, there would be numerous times that faithful Jews would have to wash themselves and, and purify themselves. 
Certainly women after childbirth are menstruating. There was a, a process of washing, of ritual cleanliness of, of men as they would do work or, or touch a, a, a dead animal or hunting. They would have to wash and, and clean themselves. And even for each meal, there was a, a purification of washing of the hands in uh, preparing to, to dine. So there has a sign of the tradition are these six clay jars, instruments of the, the law of the Torah, instruments for keeping this family holy and clean. But Jesus sees a new purpose for these jars. He says, fill them up with water. And so they filled these huge jars all the way to the brim with water. And what's, you know, so like Jesus and not like us, there's no magic words, there's no abracadabra, there's no running his hands over it. No, he just says, dip some out and give it to the steward. Give it to the, the head of the, the feast who's controlling the, the meal. And so they do. And has the... The steward takes a, a sip of the wine. He's startled. He's startled at the, the quality and the flavor and the, the wonder of this wine. There's an old joke that goes, a, a husband was trying to kind of make up with his wife, so he went out and bought a, a really fine bottle of wine. And he gave it to her, to her, and they sat down at the dining table, and, and she began to, to sip the wine, and he was so pleased as she was drinking it. And, and all of a sudden, she took a drink, and she looks at him, and she says, Oh, I love you. And he says to her, Now, is that you talking, or is that the, the wine talking? And she says, Neither. I'm talking to the wine. There, Jesus, with these jars of water, surprises the steward. For as he takes a sip of the wine, he realizes that it is the finest wine. It is the better wine. And he goes to the groom who would have been preparing the official charge of the, the wedding, and he says, most people serve the, the good wine first but you've chosen to serve the good wine now. Now our old interpretation, you've decided to serve the, the good, the, the best wine last, which fits into our, our, our phrase, the saving the best for last. But in the newer translations that have looked at this more clearly, it says you saved the best for now. From this sign, it says that the disciples believe. And in this sign, we see the launch of Jesus' ministry. In this sign of wine at the wedding at Cana, we see that Jesus has come for love and for, for celebration, and for, for joy. Sometimes we can get caught up so much, particularly in this COVID struggles, and in the struggles of our lives, in our separations, that we sometimes forget that we have these promises of joy and abundance before us. Sometimes we get caught up in the, the heavy parts and the, 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 the legalistic parts of our, of our faith and our, our, our life. Sometimes we forget that God has created us and said that we are, are good and that we are beloved and that we are, are, are blessed.
during this time of COVID, we've been very separated. But yet we've had opportunities to come together and, and celebrate and enjoy, celebrate in our ministry together in the, the ways that we can, can move forward. You know, we've celebrated in our, uh, in our church the, the marriage of, of Angeline Rosenberger. Not here, but, but they were able to gather safely and celebrate their, their beautiful wedding and the, the coming together of a, of a new family. And we've been able to, to come together to, to serve meals and serve activities of, of fellowship. But yet, everything has been muted. Everything can feel like maybe we're about ready to want, run out of wine. Maybe we are about ready to, to run out of our blessings in abundance. It's easy to kind of get a, a negative view right now. It's, it's powerful, an, a powerful attitude that is moving through us in the, the great resignations and the, the great uh, 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 sadness and depression that has come, the, the addictions and the deaths that have come during this time that has so disrupted our lives. Does it feel like we're running out of wine? Does it feel like we need some intervention and some help? Maybe so. But the promises are there in this passage. You know, one of the, the struggles that we have here at Florissant, and we just need to, to look around, and it's, it's so obvious, is that we don't have the glory of our past. When our pews were full, and, and you who are faithful, you who've been here so long, can look at the pews and you can see the people that have moved on, moved on in the Lord, moved on in their lives. And we can begin to think that the, the wine is, is running out, that the, the best was in the past, that the, the blessings were then. God was with us then. But I want to tell you today that Jesus' words and presence and his gift and his signs like so long ago in Canaan are for us today as well. That although we may feel like the wine's running out, that our energy is low, that our numbers are dipping, the best may be saved for now. Not just the best is saved for last, but the best is saved for now. It may not be the grandeur, it may not be the numbers, it may not be the money, it may not be the, 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 the grandeur, of our, our times together, of your time together before, but possibly in our ministry, possibly in the difference we're making in our lives and the lives in our community and the world, we may have saved, God may have saved the best for now, for you. Yeah, there's struggles and it's not easy, but if you look at the the life of faith of any of the disciples, of any disciples through the centuries, it's never easy. That's not what God promises. In fact, God just promises, as hard as it is, I'll always be with you. And we've had difficult times. We have some times when we really struggle, when there were just a few of us on Thursday, two of us, and our first uh, hot dog uh, family was here, we were freaking a little bit. But then others came, and it all came together, and we experienced the presence of Jesus in our service then. And I want to say that for us here at Florissant, we have to, to lift our heads up and, like the disciples, believe that Jesus' signs are for us and believe that Jesus is for us. And even though sometimes it may, sometimes in our personal life as we age too, doesn't it? Seems like the, the wine is running out. But Jesus says to us, no, there's more. There's more hope. And there's more faithfulness. And there's more love. And there's more abundance. And there's more joy, just like the joy of a wedding feast. For you and for me, my friends, we're living in a wedding feast. 
we're living in a, a promise of Jesus' presence and of a promise of Jesus' abundance and a promise of Jesus' joy. We just have to, to realize that the best has been saved for now. The best has been saved for you and for me if we'll just accept it and take on the challenge and live into it. For my friends, just as Jesus and his mother and the disciples have, were invited to that wedding feast, you and I are invited to the joining together of, of God and us. God and God's church. As Isaiah said, God and Zion and Israel. For we in our mission and in our service, in our fellowship, in on our love, are invited, empowered, and living in a wedding feast. Amen, amen, and amen. This is a time when we come together to share our, our joys and our concerns. Uh, just to, one of the names we've added was uh, Barb. 
Uh, Barb, uh, as you know, is in Del Mar Gardens, um, Barb Spurgeon, and she's having a rough time, we learned from her daughter. So we want to, to keep uh, Barb in our prayers today and add Barb to our list. Are there uh, other joys or concerns that you want to, to share today? Yes, uh, oh yes, Sherilyn, please share your joy. <laughs> I just wanted to share that Angeline was married last Saturday um, at Third Degree Glass Factory, and she married a really nice guy that she's known since high school. <laughs> so, and the family is really nice, so we're really happy and proud. I see. Ah, uh, I see. I learned something, Sherilyn. I thought they probably met in dental school. They've known each other since high school. Since high school. How about that? Wow. Yes, if I'd had uh, pictures of Angeline's wedding, I would have included them in here, in here. yeah. The wedding pictures. We're, we're so happy. Happy for you. Are there any other joys or concerns? Please, uh, let's join together in prayer. Oh, gracious God, so often we begin to feel like that class is half empty rather than half full. We can begin to be taken into the negative side, the dark worries that can overpower us, and we forget that your light shines, and it shines on us with hope and joy and, and possibilities. Lord, even when we struggle, even when we have loss, we pray, Lord, that you remind us that you are with us and that you are making new possibilities for faithfulness before us all the time. Help us, Lord, to have eyes to see the path that you would have us follow so that we might follow your way of love and sacrifice and caring for others. Lord, today we ask that you be with Barb and comfort her as she needs extra care. Lord, we pray that you will bless her and and give her patience and endurance. Be with Betty as she heals from her fall and is undergoing rehabilitation. We pray that she'll make progress each day. Lord, we pray that you continue to be with Dick as he prepares for his therapy against cancer. And be with Bill and Kay and give them patience and endurance with Bill's heart issues and, and with uh, Kay's fall and, and double vision. Lord, we continue to pray for Georgiana and her continued healing. Lord, be with Candy as she prepares for her battle against breast cancer. And be with Tom and, and join them together in support and the whole family to be strengthened in the, the health issues that they must face. We're thankful for the blessings of Ruth's health and, and for Ellen. We ask that you be with Lois and Lynn and Diane, with Fern and Doris, Carol. Sarah, Pamela, be with uh, Brittany and her battle with MS, be with Mary's brother Jim, be with Lil and Ruth and, and Jake, be with Sean and Lynn and Sue in her uh, uh, battle with her shoulder, be with uh, 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 Wayne as he works to heal from his shoulder that is causing him so much pain and we're we're thankful that you continue to watch over baby Walter and that he'll continue to make progress. Lord, as we reflect on Jesus' miracle and signs at the wedding, we are touched with joy and happiness at the, the start of a new family with, with Angeline. Lord, we're thankful for her as a child of the church to find love and now to, to seal that love in marriage. Lord, we pray that you will bless them and watch over them and give them the abundance and joys and all the possibilities that marriage can bring. Lord, as a church and as a, a country, we stand on the brink of, of great illness with this COVID surge. Lord, we pray that you'll give everyone patience and endurance, that you'll help them to continue to to stay safe in this process. Help us not to become too uh, uh, haphazard and, and forget about the, the seriousness and those that we have lost with this, this virus. 
be with all those who are battling it on the front lines, particularly health care workers that are, are so overloaded right now. Lord, we pray that you will help us to, to know that your promise of abundance and joy is for us. When we may feel poured out, when we may be, feel like we're becoming empty, remind us that you are a God of abundance and that you will provide for us what we need. Not always ease and comfort, but strength and love. Lord, we pray that that is what will guide us forward in our ministry and our service to one another and our outreach into our community and the world. Lord, it's in this ministry and in this desire to share your love that we come with the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have a, a couple of announcements for you. Does anyone want to speak on our new initiative so I don't steal the thunder? So often I start talking and someone has planned to, to speak. Do any of you want to speak on the... Uh, okay, then I will do it then. My friend, our session has decided that we are going to embark on a, on a new outreach. And it's one that everyone can participate in. It is an outreach for school supply drive uh, for this coming fall. Each month we are going to collect particular school supplies and prepare them so that we can distribute them in August before the, the school year. We particularly have looked at the requirements for the, the Hazelwood and the, the Forsyth Ferguson School District's elementary school uh, needs. And that's what we're going to work together to pry, try to provide through your generosity and your, uh, your efforts. Uh, in January, we are going to collect uh, uh, boxes of crayons, washable markers, and colored pencils. And uh, 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 Carol added this, and it's, it's so true and so important. If you don't want to do the shopping, if you want someone else to do this, We'd be glad to take monetary offerings and then uh, session members will do the, the shopping for this outreach ministry. In uh, January, we need 16 count boxes of crayons, 8 count boxes of washable markers, and 10 count boxes of colored pencils. And this will be posted on our, our bulletin board and we're going to be showing these uh, in worship. Uh, so please, uh, I know we're part way through uh, uh, January. But um, we, can, we can do this. And let me be assured to you, you know, if later on there's a sale on some of these items and you want to pick them up, it's a wonderful, it's a, it's a great idea. But this is an orderly way that we can begin to build our supplies for this outreach. Uh, through the months, we, we will have this chart up and we'll continue to show it of, of January, February, March, April, May, and June, and then July. And then in August, we'll distribute the, uh, the goods. It's from uh, paper, loose leaf paper, to spiral paper, to uh, erasers and highlighters, all the way to a pencil box and folders. So everyone can participate uh, from different scales and different levels, and I hope that you'll join in as we start this new ministry out into our community. We've had this wonderful, uh, from cooking up kindness to transforming it into a grab and go meal, and now this desire that our session has to touch the children in our community, I think is a, a real blessing to us, a real <laughs> new wine, if you will. And I hope that you'll join in and support this and, and claim it as, as your own. Are there any other uh, announcements that we want to share? Thank you for all those that did help on our snack uh, uh, grab and go meal on Thursday. And particularly today, I want to thank those who are on the Wednesday crew that come together and put everything together for us. We really appreciate your work and, and the Thursday couldn't happen without your work on, on Wednesday. So thank you for, for coming and, and sacrificing your time to, to pull this all together. 
Let's now stand and sing our doxology, and then we'll go to our final hymn. Let's stand together. Thank you for your continued support of Florissant Presbyterian Church. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, I finally taught my dog to go and get me a glass of, of red wine. You know what they call it? A Bordeaux Collie. Oh, I had to. Oh, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Let's join together and sing. 